Welcome to the Rusted Garden. We're at my community plot and I believe this is episode six. And I wanna just give you a quick look at how things have been growing. And then I'm gonna to talk to you about using Epsom salt, uh, checking out flea beetles, what kind of damage do they do to eggplant. And also talk about when you would use magnesium sulfate or Epsom salt. It's important that you use fertilizers in the right order so that you can take care of your plant. Here are my pepper plants. They're doing really well, nice dark green color. The leaves are kind of big, and one thought is, is, is that I, maybe I put in too much uh, fertilizer with these. I'm using a mix of chemical fertilizers, organic fertilizers. I tend to use both. The plants don't mind either. This is more organic over here, but I have to keep an eye out for the nitrogen, so I'll cut back on any fertilizer that I may use with these peppers down the line. Coming across this way, I've got my potatoes doing really, really well. Peppers are in there. What's interesting compared to the ones in the container, the leaves are really small. And I'm starting to think that the soil here at the community plot is lacking a nutrient. I think it's a micronutrient. That's my hay bale. There are green beans going to be growing out of there. Some more tomatoes in the background. Now those tomatoes are doing pretty good, planted in the ground. Keep that in mind too. I'm going to show you some of the problems around the community plot as I talk to you about the Epsom salt when you use it. Cucumbers, garlic, peppers, peppers in the grow bags are doing pretty good. Strawberry tower doing nicely. And then I've got my cucumbers and melons in along the there. These lettuces will come out over the next week. I'm not sure what I'm going to put in there. I do have a yellow scallop squash from the Ukraine growing in the center of that, which you probably can't see. The tomatoes in the containers are doing really well. Their color looks good. I'm satisfied with that. And down here, the kales are doing pretty well. You can see some holes in the plants. The neem oil is helping a lot, being right near the woods, and I'm only here twice a week. Lots of butterflies coming in and laying eggs. But with the neem oil, you gotta keep the spray going. So these are getting sprayed at least once a week, but when it rains hard, there is a gap in between me coming back and taking care of them. Some more greens. Just put in a moon and stars watermelon down there. And then coming across this way, some eggplant, some tomatoes. And let me show you one of the plots. Oh, there's my shadow. This tomato is struggling. It's got some yellow, some purple color to it. Same with this one. And I think that's related to lack of nutrients. Now when you feed your plants, you want to keep in mind, you can use organic or synthetic fertilizer, and you want to do a couple of checks. Did you plant these with a 10-10-10 fertilizer or something close to that, organic, synthetic, and just kind of check off that the ground did get the main fertilizers, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And then if you did that, and they still look like they're struggling, a little bit yellow, a little bit purple, then check, did you use some sort of water-soluble fertilizer or mix, again, you can be synthetic or organic, that covers the macronutrients, N, P, and K, and also micronutrients. And if you did and it's still struggling or you haven't, that's a clue they might need some micronutrients or maybe a clue that you just didn't give them enough of the micronutrients. That's when you can go right over there to the Epsom salt. And I use one tablespoon per gallon of water and you just pour it onto your plants. You can use this for all the plants in your garden and it's gonna add magnesium and uh, sulfur to the plant and that can help the plant green up and look better. Now once you do that, you sort of let your plant sit. Don't do it, overdo it. You've made the three checks. You've put in the N, P, and K, the, ma the macronutrients. You've given them micronutrients, so now you're just sort of letting them grow and see how things go, but don't keep overdoing it. Now I'm gonna take you around to the other gardens and show you some of the problems with the flea beetles and with um, possible nutrient issues in the tomato plants. So here's one plot where things are looking really good. The tomatoes are a nice dark green color. So are the cucumbers and squash in the back and the peppers are looking good. So, you know, imagine we're all using the same soil, but this gardener seems to have been able to feed and take care of these plants in a way that they're not struggling. And this is just, you know, something we can use for contrast as I show you some of the other plots. The tomatoes in these beds are looking really, really good. This uh, plot right here, you can see all the weeds in this bed here. And yesterday the gardeners came over, the owners, and put down 
newspaper and straw as a way to choke out the weeds. And I just thought I would show you that's one option to control weeds rather than taking them all out by hand. You can just cover them up with newspaper, straw, mulch, keeps moisture in and also takes care of the weeds. But these tomatoes look good. They're nice and dark. They got the right color to them. So here are some tomatoes that are struggling. They're yellow, they're kind of small, and at this point they should be lush green and getting a lot bushier. And I would do the, you know, the check here. Did you put down N, P, and K? Were they fed with a liquid fertilizer that had micronutrients? And if not, you can give them some Epsom salt because the magnesium will help them out. It certainly won't hurt them at this point. Once you, you know, cover N, P, and K, micronutrients, magnesium, again, it's important. That's when you just let your tomato plants sit. You don't want to keep overdoing it because too, much, too many nutrients, too much fertilizing can also come, cause harm to your plants. But these are plants right in there that are struggling. Here's a plot where all the plants are looking really good. Large, lush, green, tomatoes are even forming. So this plot has the right fertilizer in the soil. Here's an eggplant that's growing in a hay bale and it's yellowing out pretty badly. There's lots of holes in the leaves, little holes, brown spots, and that's caused by flea beetles. Here in Maryland, zone seven, and you can see one crawling right at the tip of my finger. You can see some on the back of the leaf there. Those are flea beetles. And in my area, they come all the time. I don't even know how they arrive, to be honest with you. These are way up in a hay bale. I have eggplant on my deck at home. They have flea beetles. When you put them in the ground, they get them. But the flea beetles will eat holes into your leaves, weaken the plant, it will yellow, and it'll just be covered in holes. And the only way that I've found that is effective, I've been trying neem oil this year, not working on the flea beetles. And I use um, chemical dust. You can get an organic, you can get a chemical, but dusting is seems to be what works. And this is one pest I really get a, regularly and severely here in my area. There's some more tomatoes that are struggling. Yellow leaves at the bottom, generally weak looking, and that's just a nutritional issue. There could be a chance, you know, it's too much water, but this is a raised bed. I don't think it's that. And it's certainly not cold weather. It's been warm here during the day up into the 80s at times, 60 degree nights, but this is just a nutritional issue. So when you see your plants, your tomatoes, looking similar to the ones I've been showing you, you know, go through that check of nutrients. Don't overdo it, but make sure you cover them all. And once you feed them, the macro and micronutrients, you can just let them grow and, and you know, hope for the best. A couple more struggling tomatoes. And again, it's all really about nutrition. It's not the wood chips. Wood chips on top of your soil aren't going to deplete, deplete, deplete the nitrogen from your plants. Those are eggplant inside the tomato cage wrapped in a mesh and even some foil down on the bottom. And I think this is a way to try and deal with the flea beetles. But if you get in close, you can see that there's whole holes in the plants and they're starting to yellow. The flea beetles are just too small. They're going to go through the mesh. Um, the foil sometimes confuses insects. I'm not sure how it works with flea beetles. But this looks like an organic way that they're trying to control it. And sometimes you need to use more than organic methods. Don't overdo it. Use it, use it wisely, be sensible about it. Otherwise, this garden looks great. Tomatoes are really green. And then when you come in here and look at their squash or zucchini, that's actually a zucchini, I can see one. They're growing really well. And when I get close to the leaves, those yellow marks, or those yellow marks, those white marks on the leaves right in there, that is perfectly normal. That is not powdery mildew. That sometimes confuses people that they're getting powdery mildew. Powdery mildew looks just like what it says. It will look like a powder has been sprinkled across your plant leaves. Those white markings, perfectly normal and healthy. So here's a whole row of eggplant that is getting hit by the flea beetles. And one of the most important things you can do is just know the pests that are in your area and come up with a plan ahead of time because most pests and disease return to the garden about the same time, you know, year after year. In my case, here in Maryland, we have to deal with flea beetles, and I found the best way after trying neem oil, I even tried covering like in that example, they're just too small. I don't know how they get there, but dusting is what seems to work best, and if I didn't do that, I don't think I would get eggplant in my area.
I hope the quick tour gave you some ideas how to address nutrient issues with your tomato plants. Also an idea of how you might identify flea beetles on the eggplant, what you might need to do to treat them. Again, it's really important you know what pests and disease come in your areas and pre-treat. Also gave you a quick look at some of the zucchini leaves just to know that the whiting on some of the leaves is perfectly normal. It's not um, powdery mildew. Powdery mildew will look like a powder. Here are my eggplants and you can see a couple of crystals on there. That's actually Epsom salt. I just actually reshot this segment. But I put on the chemical powder last night, killed off the flea beetles. You can see there's holes but no beetles left. I'm going to rinse that off now so the insects coming in today won't land on that. And also, you can use one tablespoon of Epsom salt per gallon of water, or you can just take a pinch like this and sprinkle it around and then water it in. Don't overdo it. You don't want to put a tablespoon in here, just a pinch like I did, and that will work perfectly fine. And again, that's going to bring magnesium and sulfur to your garden. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out my blog at www.therestofgarden.blogspot.com and also check out my YouTube videos. Thanks.